Hello everyone and welcome to the 18th episode of What Matters and I've got some really great stories for you this week. I hope you're all doing well and let's get into them and let's start on Monday. So authorities in the Indian capital of Delhi have called for help from the army as the city grapples with a new brutal wave of COVID-19. Hospitals in the city are in crisis with intensive care beds full and an acute shortage of oxygen. Delhi this weekend reported record daily deaths as more than 400. Um, and they want the army to run medical care with oxygen facilities for around 10,000 patients and a further 1,000 in intensive care units. Federal officials deny that there are shortages, saying the challenges come from transportation and logistics. I mean, we all know that may be a cover-up story. However, the city is in tatters. I don't know if you've seen some of the images online, and it is really, really bad. And we thought we were, our uh, hospitals were full here in the first wave, which I'm not denying they were, but this is pretty intense stuff. Fantastic story here on Tuesday from the Cardiff University football team that wants to change lad culture perceptions. When Ben Marrett saw a post on Facebook threatening women at the university with rape on a Saturday night, he wanted to do something to change it. He messaged members of his football team asking if they would support him in cha um, chaperoning women in pairs late at night home. Ben makes sure they all wear red football tops and posted photos of their faces on social media so they were easily identifiable. This isn't just the only thing that the boys have been doing. Ben and the team and the Vice President Jared Epis have been working to encourage men to talk about mental health. So it's fantastic work from a fantastic set of guys in a team where you would normally associate sort of bad male sort of culture like that so it's fantastic and they're breaking down those boundaries so well done to them and fantastic story here for dedicated groups and officials who are working on saving coral reefs in indonesia it's a fantastic story for our environment so a coral reef in indonesia has been partly restored in an extensive rehabilitation program around 40,000 square meters of coral reef have been restored as part of a collaboration between local groups the conservation group the nature conservancy and the pet brand Shiba. I don't know if any of you have cats and you bought food from um, Shiba for your cats. We have before so I didn't know this is part of what they do but this is great. It's part of the plan to restore 185,000 square meters of the world's coral reefs by 2029. One part of this coral reef in Indonesia has seen a growth in coral cover from 5% to 55%. What a result! That deserves a beer. I don't know, this was from last night. It's uh, bloody empty, whatever. Right, on Thursday. Thursday was election day, but what exactly are we voting for and who is running to be elected? So, these are the categories that you were voting for and the relevant seats. So, you had English local councils, of which there are 143 and approximately 5,000 seats to be elected within those 143 councils. Police and crime commissioners, of which there were 39 to be elected. London Assembly seats, of which there were 25. You had directly elected mayors, of which there were 13 running. And you may have seen Nico from YouTube is running. So if you live in London, I hope you voted for him. Um, I, I don't know how he's getting on, but I'd love to hear it. Um, you also have Scottish and Welsh Parliament seats up for grabs as well. I hope you voted and we'll find out the results throughout the week and by the latest next Monday, apparently. If you were faced with someone who'd just been stabbed, would you know what to do? Well, luckily if you don't, the St John's Advents are offering free training to children as old as 14 in some places to help stab victims. The St John's Advents say that street crime is of major concern at the moment and it's critical to give young people life-saving first aid training. So, if someone was stabbed, you should. Make sure it is safe to approach. Call 999, put your phone on speaker so your hands are free. Two, try to calm the patient if they're conscious. Number three, if the implement is still in place, don't remove it. Don't, please don't remove it. Come on, don't remove it. Number four, apply pressure to the wound, pack it with clean dressing or a piece of clothing will do or whatever you've got on you. Number five, hold it firmly in place to stop the bleeding or to stem the bleeding as it's known. And number six, if the patient stops breathing, start chest compressions, only CPR and follow the call handler's instructions. So there you go, that may or may not be helpful at some point in your life. I hope it's not but if you do need it, there it is. A documentary about a 10-year-old Aboriginal boy called Dujan Husan about his experience in school in My Blood It Runs has reignited a debate about Australia's failure to give Indigenous children a good start in life. Created by filmmaker Maya Newell. Maya. Created by filmmaker Maya Newell. She follows Dujan as he struggles throughout the Australian education system. The film is now being made available in schools in the UK and Dujan finishes with saying, I made the film to give other Aboriginal kids hope and strength, but I think it can give all kids everywhere hope, which is a fantastic final message. So 
the, the link for that one is below. It's quite a lengthy article, so I'd have, I've just sort of summarised it there, but it is there if you want it, as are all the other articles as they are every week. So I hope you've all found that interesting. Um, as I say, only two more episodes of this to go. I'm going to do 20 of these, and then I've got a new series coming out, which a few of you may already know about. Well, I'm working on it anyway, but yeah. It's lovely to see you all. Well, I can't see you, but whatever, you know what I mean. Um, I hope you all have a fantastic week, and I'll see you all later on.